everyone, it's Friday, April 1st, and I'm not going to do anything April Fools in this video. Don't be worried about that. This video is to uh, let everybody know about upcoming events and the life and work of Noata First United Methodist, and also to um, offer a short message at the end. Uh, I want to remind everybody that monthly, our sister church in Delaware offers a free breakfast on Saturdays. It's always the first Saturday of the month, and the next one is tomorrow. And so if you would like to go have a free breakfast, they do welcome donations, but it's always delicious pancakes, biscuits and sausage, uh, orange juice, coffee. There's a couple other things I never remember, but it's delicious. So wake up early tomorrow, go and eat. I won't be there. I'll be at a, a birth training class in Tulsa, but it's always a great time. Ask, uh, ask Michael or Linda. Um, also, I want to make sure everybody knows that the following day on Sunday, JC is going to be out of town, so his Sunday school class is canceled. Just go uh, join the other class, and Mike Staley is going to be leading this Sunday because Bill is out of town, so make sure to be praying for both of our Sunday school leaders as they're traveling about. Um, also, we're starting a new Bible study. Well, actually, we're just continuing in an old Bible study in Delaware. We had been meeting on Tuesday evenings, and we decided to move it to Sunday afternoons at 4. And so right now we're finishing up the Gospel of Mark, and people from all over the area are invited to come. You don't have to be a member of the church. You don't have to live in Delaware. So no Wada folks, if you are interested in learning more about the Scriptures, please consider showing up. Let's see. Tuesday, loaves and fishes. Uh, that's always our free lunch that we offer at the No Wada Church. And it's always delicious. We do it once a month for the working crowd. We schedule it at lunchtime so that people can get off work and come and have a, a nice meal. Uh, once again, that's free. They do accept donations. Um, but also there's a short devotional. It's just a time to get together and really enjoy the community. And you can bring a friend. You can bring a spouse. You can bring nobody. It's a good crowd. So please consider attending. We'd love to have new people. Wednesdays we have a regular activities and that really needs to be something that becomes a bigger and bigger part of the life and the work of our church. Um, you know, it really is a shame when the only thing we have going on uh, spiritually with the church is on Sunday morning. We really need to have other things that we're doing with the church. And so there's a lot to engage people during the day, starting in the early morning. Um, there's a Dinners with Love crew that gets together and starts preparing the meal for the evening. And they're always welcoming new volunteers to come into the kitchen and help out. And it's a really good crew in there. There's always a lot of laughing and, and uh, joy in being together. Our after school program starts after school. And we had 16 kids here this last week, and we have a good regular group of kids that is growing in faith and knowledge of the Lord, and it's just a wonderful group. If you know of any children under the age of 15 and above the age of 4, they're very welcome, and it really engages all age groups well. So if you know any children that are understimulated or could stand to learn more about the faith, bring them we don't teach any denominational theology. This is just biblical stuff that we teach the kids, so it's it's good. And then choir uh, begins in the evening at 6, and it's a good group. Uh, we have a great choir director. I'm kind of biased. I'm married to her, but I just think it's a, a great crew. Uh, we need all singing parts, but especially sopranos, and it could never hurt to have another tenor. So if you know of anyone who loves to sing the Lord's praises, please invite them to come. Finally, the only other upcoming event I wanted to make sure everybody knew about is that uh, a week from tomorrow, next Saturday, we're going to be having a, a painting day over at the Parsonage. As the pastor, I just get to invite people to come over and work on the house with me, so we're going to be repainting then. I know that's a citywide cleanup day as well, so if you're committed to that, then go to that. That's fine, but trustees, please try and make it a priority to, to be over there, and we'll see if we can't knock it all out in a day. I wanted to say a final note, um, kind of wanted to make sure everybody knows that Easter is not over. Easter Day is the first day of a 50-day season called Eastertide um, in the English language, and of course that title Easter is problematic. I appreciated how Pastor Wendell over at First Church of God is calling it Resurrection Day, uh, but it's not just a day, it's a whole season. It's a 50-day season where we remember the resurrection and where we celebrate, and for uh all Christians, we do not fast, and it's a it's a prolonged party of 50 days, and uh, you know that's to balance out the 40 days of Lent that came beforehand. And so, yes, we have dark seasons, but we also have bigger, better 
light seasons. And so make sure that you're being celebratory in your daily life and that your faith is constantly meditating upon the resurrection. But also this Sunday is uh, our monthly Eucharist, the Lord's Supper, uh, when we get together and we remember Christ's Last Supper, uh, where he initiated, inaugurated the new covenant. And that is the covenant that we're a part of. The Lord's Supper is something that is the heart of who we are. It's not some decorative thing off to the side. It's more important than preaching. It's more important than singing. It's more important than, than any other thing we do. It's a sacrament. It's a mystery. And it's something that I think is often undervalued on the part of many Christians. Uh, oftentimes Christians are much more concerned about the sermon than the sacrament. But how many times do you hear talk in the scriptures about a sermon or preaching? You hear about prophesying a little bit, but preaching and, and, and pastors are really not nearly as important as the sacrament, as what the, the body of Christ does when we get together. When you read Acts chapter 2, and the, the church is born, the Holy Spirit comes upon the disciples, and they go out into the street making new disciples. One of the very first things that they do, it says that they got together and they ate regularly. Eating together is a, a very holy thing in which we come to encounter the risen Christ in a very powerful way. And there's a, there's a hymn that Charles Wesley wrote about it. It's not very singable, but it has great words. Because, you know, the, the Protestants, we got involved in a big fight about uh, transubstantiation isn't real versus it's just a token, it doesn't mean anything. But um, the Wesleys, they said, we don't have to figure this out. It's a mystery, and it's wonderful. Oh, the depth of love divine, the unfathomable grace. Who shall say how bread and wine God into us conveys? How the bread his flesh imparts, how the wine transmits his blood, fills his faithful people's hearts with all the life of God. And there's some more wonderful verses to that. But the thing is, we've been told that we should eat and drink this holy meal as often as we drink wine regularly. And that used to be a very often thing, a very regular thing. And the world over, there are many different Christian traditions, but the one thing that you know that you're in Christian company wherever you are around the world, the one thing that they will do in worship that we will all recognize is the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. And so it's a very important thing. It can only be done when the whole assembly is gathered. The only exceptions we ever make are when people are homebound. It's a very most holy thing. Now there's some people who who uh, they focus entirely on God's grace and how that's enough and it, nothing else is important. But the thing is, Jesus, whenever he washed his disciples' feet, uh, Peter said, I don't need that. Get that out of here. You don't need to do that for me. And Jesus said, unless I wash your feet, you have no share in me. You remember that? And then Peter said, well, then not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. This sacrament of communion is that spiritual washing that we need. Jesus said, if you've been washed once, you need not wash your whole body again. You only need wash your feet. And if we have been baptized into the Lord, if we've received new birth through his blood, then we need this regular meal. Not to be born again again, we've already been born again, but to be cleansed of our sins. And so when we come together, we're going to repent of our sins. And we're going to encourage one another in faith. We're going to share a sign of peace. And we're going to have this holy meal. We're going to pray and sing and eat together, and it'll be very blessed. So, I would encourage you to make it a priority to come partake of this holy meal. If you're interested in the way that Methodists in particular see the sacrament of communion, then there's a, a document you can find online called This Holy Mystery, and it's about 20 pages of scenarios and why we believe what we do. It has a lot of Bible verses. It's something that's encouraged me in my faith, even though it's kind of nerdy, so there's no reason why anybody shouldn't be reading that if you want to know more about the sacrament. Also, if you have one of these, the hymnal, then uh, that's another great way to figure out what we believe about lots of things and what the faith is that we've been handed. So may you all be encouraged. May all of you be celebrating during this season of Easter tide. May we all be growing in faith. This is not a time to be lazy. Party time is not lazy time. It's a time to continue doing the work and the mission that Christ has for us. So go forth, do the mission, do what God has for you to do this day, and I hope that I'll be seeing you all and worshiping with you again this Sunday. God bless you all. Bye.